Well, good morning, everyone. It's Lonnie, and we are back in the shed. Turn one of these lights on, anyway. We're back in the shed, and uh, interestingly enough, I had like a very good sales day for a Monday. Well, I gotta figure out which one that was again. Very good sales day for a Monday. Um, sold all kind of stuff, like weird stuff too, like stuff I've had listed for a while, and I don't know. I don't know. Sometimes eBay is just good to you and you don't know exactly why. Uh, but I did sell only two comic book orders. So if you're tired of watching me pull comic book orders, then stick around because there's only a couple this time. Let's see, 128. So yeah, I sold CW 128 here. This Grim Fairy Tales. Uh, I didn't hear the one about the girl in the hot tub with the rubber ducky. I didn't hear that fairy tale yet, but it's in here apparently. <laughs> I got $19.99 plus shipping on top for that one. And then I sold a lot of Emma Frost. And yeah, I do have all these boxes labeled. I'm actually, my organization of the comics has actually been working out very well. And I almost dropped this whole bundle of comics but i didn't the organization of these comics has been working very well i just label the boxes and then uh each one gets a number like you see here fat <laughs> fat two and cw is the name of the other one that stood that did stand for cave woman at one point so this lot right here got 27.99 plus shipping on top yeah like i said that's the only two comic sales that i made i did sell several um several of these dvd box sets so i have those pulled up here i'll start pulling those warehouse 13 season two there's season one season three i don't even remember listing those not bad uh, da, 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 da. warehouse 13 season two okay right here 8.99 plus shipping on top for this I sold an NCIS New Orleans Season 1. Where the heck is it at? Is this one? NCIS New Orleans, the first season. There we go. That sold for $8.99 also. Okay, then I sold a Leverage the third season. Leverage the third season, right here. Here we go. Leverage the third season got eleven ninety nine plus shipping on top for that. All right, we'll hit the cube real quick for a puck. Just listed this. Uh, Duncan Keith, number two for the Chicago Blackhawks, got fifty nine ninety nine plus shipping on top for that. And this is something that sold that I've had listed for a pretty good while, so it was kind of. Honestly, I was a little surprised it sold. Um, well, there's supposed to be another one over here somewhere. Sold two of these cassette cases. This one, oh, here's the other one right here. And this one. These are like, these are definitely like from the 70s or 80s. We all had these back then for our cassettes. Might even have one you bring out to the car. That's probably what these were for. They Like these just hold 12 cassettes each. That's how we transported our music back then. You bring these two big boxes, you'd have 24 albums <laughs> on cassette. So um, anyway, I got $24.99 plus shipping on top for those. And um, that I actually did really well on those. Like this has been a long time ago, but I bought a bunch of cassettes and I bundled all those cassettes together. I think I did pretty well. I don't even remember what I sold them for, honestly maybe 50 bucks or something. And then I had these cases and I was like, well, I'll try and sell those separate. And then uh, I did. And I don't think I had much into the whole thing. Okay, we gotta go to the Sarah shelf now. And this was a surprising sale. But, oh, here they are right here. All right, see these Wolfman guys? We'll take a better look at them when we get over there. Uh, I got these on my last buy for my guy. Bought a bunch of comics and some models. 
Uh, I already sold one of the other models. What, and I got some other stuff too during that buy. But uh, yeah, I got these three Wolfman models and somebody bought all three of them. They paid, it was like $34.99 a piece plus shipping to get all three. So that was an awesome sale. I never thought I would sell all those to the same person. This is cool. I just shipped one of these yesterday and sold another one. So these are going along pretty well. And look, I put, I've been putting these, um, these thumbnails in from the, what is it called? Completely app or something. Yeah, completely app. It's just easier. And what I really like about those little thumbnails is you can see how many days the stuff that I'm selling has been on the site. It says it there on the little thumbnail. So I figured that I would rather use that instead of the eBay thumbnail. So you have a little more information. You kind of judge like if it was a good, a good flip or not. Like these little guys here. I think they've been on the site like 600 days now that doesn't sound great but the margins are there and i've sold i've sold what sold like i think 60 something of them now so i thought that would be a little more information for y'all all right last order i'm pulling is garbage pail kids stickers okay this is it right here frigid bridget sold this pack of stickers for $10.99 plus shipping on top okay i'm packing comics the comics i showed y'all earlier i'm using those gemini mailers there that i get on ebay they're called gemini comic mailers i really like them um so this is an example of one comic or this is either a comic or that uh i'm using i use one of these for those garbage pail kids stickers too so anyway, fold it up like, looks like that. And I usually have to put like one piece of bubble wrap in there just to keep it from jiggling around. And then this is an example of that same comic mailer, this time with 14 comics. And this is right near the edge of what I would say fits in here. So but that's a nice bundle though, 14. Uh, so I, I brought that up, not just to talk about the comic books, but also I want to talk about flat rate envelopes, which I know is a captivating discussion. But uh, whenever I bought these, one of the selling points of these Gemini mailers is that they fit in a flat rate envelope. So you can stuff one 14, you probably get 15 comics in one. And if you use, we're going to look at several flat rate envelopes. Number one, is this guy right here the priority hang on let me uh let me pull up the prices and pull the prices these are my prices on that account because i am a top rated seller if you do right well it does matter whenever it comes to some things uh like i believe these rates are probably cheaper than what you could get on pirate ship for instance uh but yeah this is a padded flat rate envelope seven dollars and 52 cents now Used to be $7.33. Price just went up to $7.52 the end of last month. This is a flat rate envelope, not padded, just paper like this. $6.94. Pretty good bit smaller. Eh. Actually, it's probably close to the same size, but it doesn't expand. It, ha it has no flex to it. So you wouldn't be able to fit quite as much in there, I don't think. And then this is the one that I had never used before that I wanted to let y'all know about. This is a legal size flat rate envelope. You can see, and it's $7.23. If you look at this, it holds more than a padded flat rate envelope. And look how much bigger it is versus a standard size flat rate envelope. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Maybe about 15% bigger. So 15% bigger and it only costs an extra 29. Yeah, is that right? Six, 
29 cents extra 29 cents for that size and then the whole reason i bring that up is because the gemini mailers fit into these so in this particular case these 14 comics well the I just shipped one like this the other day. I don't want to do it one-handed. Hang on. Anyways, I just put the uh, I just put that Gemini mailer with 14 comics in it um, into here, and it it fit fine. And almost three pounds of comic books I'm shipping for seven dollars and twenty-three cents. So, just thought I'd share. I didn't even know really about the the legal size flat rate envelope i assume the option has been there for years and i just never paid attention to it but it is a great deal especially if especially if you're shipping comics and you have those gemini mailers it makes a perfect tandem like this so uh yeah i'll link i'll put links both to this because you have to order these on the usps website i'll put links to this and to those Gemini mailers that I'm talking about. I got everything packed right here. I forgot I have one more thing I gotta pull. Some player named Austin, Austin Jackson. I sold a uh, signed photo of. So gotta pull that now. Okay, I found it. This, this one I sold for $14.99 plus shipping on top. One of the lower value ones. Well, I had a, had a few more orders come in today. And I'm going to go ahead and pull those now. Pull those and pack those now. Just in the mood. Supposedly, I have some toner that's sitting over here on a shoe shelf. So, let's see if it's actually here. It is. It's right here. This toner right here. This is a HP 12A. I've had it for a pretty pretty good while, I think. Sold for $24.99 plus shipping on top. Then I sold a, another DVD box set thing. Uh, season one of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. This is actually going out. Who's this going to? Oh, this is going to Tyler. So Tyler, thank you very much for the purchase, man. Let's go pull your order. Let's see. Season one, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. There's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And it is season one. So thanks again, man. I hope you enjoy. Also sold a lot of comics out of the CW box. This one right here in front. Um, it's called Jazz. Is one of the characters there? I have no idea what this is. <laughs> uh, Double Impact or something? I don't know. I I just put the lot together. A uh, lot of how many? 18 18 comics there so probably won't be able to fit that in one of those gemini mailers i was showing y'all earlier i uh, got 29.99 plus a little bit of shipping on top let's do a few questions I haven't done those too much lately uh this one's from blake lonnie why don't you send comics through media mail are they not allowed okay so my understanding after reading um reading all the rules and stuff about media mail uh, and what's allowed and what's not allowed my understanding is that books are or magazines or comics if they have ads in them then they are not allowed to go media mail so like most comic books have advertisements in them uh, there are some exceptions some comic books do not have advertisements in them um, a lot of graphic novels don't have advertisements other than maybe um, maybe for like a page that has a few other graphic novels you can order or something like that and that is okay by rule and uh you know for the media mail rules so i follow those rules i didn't always follow those rules honestly but yeah you're not really allowed to ship um to ship magazines and comic books with advertisements in them via media mail um i'm not here to judge anybody that does do that i'm just simply stating the rules and stating what I do. Here's a question about inventory. Um, I'm having a hard time keeping track of my inventory in my totes. I have around 50 totes worth of stuff in a back catalog, some listed, some not. 
How do you keep track of your inventory if something sells on eBay? I was going to put numbers on my totes. Do you have a database with your items telling you what bin it's in? Do you put the bin number in the eBay auction so you know where to pull it from? Okay, so I, I have shelf names on, on these shelves and this is a dumb way to do it. It's just a fun way to do it that I, that I decided to do. Like um, at one point I had all Funko Pops on these shelves. Pop B, Pop A, those are all Funko Pops. I named this one after one of my daughters. Um, Mid A, I don't even know where the heck I got that from. I got one named after my wife. I've got one named after Cincinnati Picker even. So in the, um, the custom skew field, whenever you're making your listing, you can put something there. So the stuff that I have that is just loose on those shelves, I put though like if I put something on the Molly shelf, I just put Molly in the custom skew whenever I make the listing. And then whenever I go to pull the order, it says custom skew Molly and I know exactly where to go. And I just have to figure out where it is on the shelf at that point, which is usually extremely easy. If I put something in here, I just call it cube. Like my, my system is like, or my system is way different from most other people. Like most people will have, like you say, bins and they'll letter them, bin A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then inside of those bins, they may even number them, you know, number the items inside so that they have like a, a B26, then they'll know they have to go to go to bin B and find the poly bag with 26 on the outside of it. You know, it's going to be different for different people based on how your stuff is packed. If your stuff is not visible, you may need to do something like that. But then like with these comics, say, I have different comic boxes. CWT, COM1, and FAT are the comic boxes I have right now. So same thing. I put that in the custom SKU field. And then within this container, I'll have like 167 going all the way back. And whenever I go to list some more comics, I'll just kind of take a gander, say, ah, I got a little room, got a pretty good bit of room in this one. So the next one I'll, next few listings I'll put in this one or, or whatever. I'm like, or, hey, I have a lot of room in this one. So it's nothing too fancy. That's what I do. I just use custom skew field whenever listing. Okay, here is one from PMP Outdoors. Um, what's your process to price your items? Do you only li list fixed price? I mostly list fixed price. Every now and then I will fire up an auction. Uh, actually, I think I have one in last night as a matter of fact. Uh, just occasionally I'll, I'll, I'll do an auction if it's for something that I think might be able to go a little high. But for 99% of stuff, um, I just figure out a price and I go with it. And I get prices mostly from solds. Like I look at, I look the item up on eBay then I click on sold. I see what it has sold for in the past. And especially if there are a lot of solds, if it's a high, like a, like if it sells at a high frequency, you can get a really accurate price that way. Uh, you can al you also want to look at the current listings that are not sold to see what other, what other people have available. And that'll kind of give you an idea of how high or low you may want to go versus, um, versus what it's sold for in the past so like even if something has sold a little lower than maybe you think it should have in the past if there are currently no active listings for that item you can maybe get a little more money for it if you have the only one there another way that i look up items uh to find out a value i use worth point a lot i use worth point every day um especially lately uh, i didn't used to use it that much but like with these comics, a lot of these comics that I've been having and other collectible stuff too, uh, even like the sports photos, lots of stuff. Um, like the comics, I have a lot of these are like one of a hundred. So the chances of one of those being sold in the past 90 days on eBay, pretty low. But the chance of it being sold in the past year or two on, e on eBay, fairly good like most of them I've been able to find but I can find those on worth point because it goes back years like 10 years or something the only thing you have to be careful on worth point is markets especially collectibles markets move fairly quickly so if you're looking at a price from 2016 
or some or, you know, 2015 or whatever, it may have absolutely no bearing on what that item is worth now, especially when it comes to pop culture, sports, things like that. Those tastes change drastically, ever, ever shifting, ever shifting numbers there. So got to be careful. But um, yeah, I typically will only list fixed price. And for the most part, I don't even do best offer uh, just because I don't do best offer. I prefer to figure out a price, set my price, and wait. And then if it doesn't sell, maybe I'll put stuff on sale later. But I don't like doing a whole lot of back and forth through best offer. It's just my choice not to do that. Um, I think in general, best offer, uh, when I did do it before, even if... I told myself I was going to be, um, I was going to be disciplined and okay, I'll only take this. And I know you can set this up, but I, I wouldn't, I would just click on best offer. Right. And I would say, okay, I'm not going to take anything lower than this. I, that's what I think in my head, but then the offer comes in, maybe you're having a slow sales day and you're like, you know what? I want to make a sale today. And you know, yeah, you can make a sale today, but that's that's kind of short-term thinking. What you really need to do uh, a lot of times is just wait for the right buyer to come along and pay your price if you priced it correctly. That's my outlook on it anyways. Here's one from One Low X, uh, Mug Me. <laughs> By the way, is there a video of you buying the comics? If not, how much did you buy them all for? You're making a killing on them. So yes, there is a video of me buying the comics. It's on my other YouTube channel called Garage Flips. I will link that video down below. So, so far I have, I got to write this down so I don't forget. I'm going to have links for the uh, priority mail supplies, specifically the legal flat rate, and then the Gemini comic mailers, and then now a link to that video where I bought the comics. But um, just to spoil it, if you haven't seen it yet, I paid two grand, but I got um, I got like a bunch of sports memorabilia and stuff, and I have actually have a spreadsheet of stuff that I've listed from that buy. Uh, it wasn't just comics; comics were just one part of that. So from that buy, uh, there were some video games in that buy too. And, well, let's see. I had, okay, the total for the video games uh, listed was 638. I have sold most of those games now. The total for, so what is that? Oh, I bought NASCAR cars in that same buy too. The total listings for the NASCAR cars that were in that buy, uh, $1,045. There were a few other things too there. Mostly mostly NASCAR cars though. Um, the total of the comics that I've listed from that buy now, $8,382. And then the total for the sports stuff, like all the photos, the signed photos. I have some pucks, like I mailed a puck earlier. Uh, the total I've listed just for the sports stuff $3,000 and uh, $3,085. So $3,085, $8,382, that's $11,000, $11,400, $12,000, uh, eh, I call it $12,500. Right at, so out of that $2,000 lot, I listed about $13,000 worth of stuff. Not quite done yet. I still have comics that I'm listing from the, that stuff too, but, uh, yeah, 13 grand in listings, uh, mostly not including shipping. So does also does not include fees. So you'll have to take out about 12% of that. And it also doesn't account for some of the stuff may not sell for the price I'm listing it for. I may have to take 10, 20, 30% or even more sometimes uh, to get some of that stuff sold. But it was an absolutely... Uh, it, I think it might have been the best buy I've had for my guy so far. So I, I definitely made out on that one. Question from Rich Laxton. Uh, curious about the U USPS boxes compared to the brown boxes. I know the brown boxes cost a bit, but what about taking the free USP 
USPS box and wrapping it in the brown heavy paper. I know it may take a couple extra minutes, but wouldn't it be cheaper in the long run? Wife and I are newbies and are excited to get going. Um, okay, so the question is about the brown boxes. Now, typically when I use a brown box, I'm mailing either, um, either first class package or media mail. So if your idea there, Rich, is to take the priority box and then disguise it to where they don't know it's a priority box so that I can use it for free, well, that's that's unethical, like point blank. And if that's what you're doing, I'm not, I'm not judging you, but for me, <laughs> I don't do that. You know, I'm not going to do that. And uh, you mentioned it may take a couple extra minutes. Well, most of the boxes I use, uh, they cost, you know, 30 cents or so. Some of the larger ones might cost up to a buck or more, but usually most of the boxes I'm using are costing like 30 cents. So to spend a couple of minutes to save 30 cents doesn't make sense. So that's my answer for that. Uh, and I don't, I don't know any other reason why you would want to wrap um, USPS boxes in brown paper other than disguise, other than to disguise the fact that you're using one of their boxes. And yeah, that's that's just shady. Okay, here's a question about um, Second Store from Paid in Blood. And this is a question I've seen quite a few times. Uh, I have a question about, they say dumb, but it's not a dumb question. It's just a question about the Second Store. Are the PayPal accounts the same? Uh, in my case, yes, I use the same PayPal account for all three of my eBay accounts. They all go to the same PayPal. So uh, according to eBay, you can you can have multiple accounts it's totally within the rules it's fine you just have to have a different email address for each account that you open on ebay um as far as paypal is concerned last i i saw the last time i looked uh you are allowed to have two accounts you can have one personal account and then one business account and that is it like you can't have two different personal accounts or anything like that so um, yeah, even if you wanted, like if you had three stores and you wanted to have a different PayPal for each store, you as an individual person could not actually do that. All right, it's time to give away a couple more mugs. Like I, like I announced last video, um, giving away two mugs and two stickers. I don't, I would give away some more of those koozies, but I am out. There are no more koozies, uh, left, at least for me. So this is the video right here, filter du duplicate users, and we're only looking for comments that have the word mug in them somewhere. Let's see how many unique comments we got. 773, and we're gonna pick a winner. Good luck, everyone. First winner is Lance Graham. I want to win a mug. You are a cool guy. <laughs> well, thank you, Lance, and congratulations on your win. One more to pick. Oh, and hit start. The other winner, 1200 V4. Hi, Lonnie, keep up the great work, mug. <laughs> so congratulations to 1200 V4 and to Lance. There is an email address down below. Um, just send me an email titled mug winner and uh, your address and I'll make sure to get that mug out to you thank you to everyone else that participated there will be more mug giveaways also thank you for watching the video I will see you guys again soon take care bye bye